Welcome, dear viewers, to another insightful exploration into the timeless narratives of the Bible. Today, our focus turns to the captivating story of Isaiah, a prophet whose words reverberate through the centuries, resonating with divine significance. Born in the 8th century BC in Jerusalem, Isaiah's life unfolds against the backdrop of tumultuous times, marked by the looming threat of the Assyrian Empire and the divine calling that would shape his destiny. Join us as we delve into the life, visions, and prophecies of Isaiah, a profound messenger of God, whose words foreshadow the coming of the greatest figure in biblical history, Jesus Christ. Hey, Laurival, what's up? This is all about Isaiah in Hebrew and already Yahu, which means God is salvation. He was born in the 8th century BC in Jerusalem. His prophetic calling happened around 742 BC. Isaiah coincided with the beginning of the Assyrian Empire's westward expansion, which threatened Israel. Isaiah proclaimed it as a warning that Israel was a people without God. So, in today's video, we'll talk about the history of the prophet Isaiah. Grace overflowed, my friends. I ask for help from all of you to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell. If you like the video, leave a like. It really helps me produce more videos. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Isaiah's vision, the first recorded event in his life, is his prophetic calling as found in the sixth chapter of the book bearing his name. This happened around 742 BC and the vision probably occurred in the temple in Jerusalem, making him a prophet described in a first-person narrative. According to this account, he saw God and various seraphim above his throne, impressed by the contact with divine glory and holiness. He became distressed and aware of God's need to send a messenger to the people of Israel. Despite his own sense of unworthiness, he offered himself for God's service, saying, Here I am, send me. Thus, he was appointed to give voice to divine words. It wasn't an easy undertaking. He had to condemn his own people and witness the nation crumble. He knew he would face bitter opposition and deliberate disbelief. All of this he had to endure, strengthened internally by the vision and a sudden resolution. Throughout his life, Isaiah was prepared to find meaning in the vision before the decisive moment arrived. Information about this period of his life is inconclusive, primarily consisting of inferences drawn from the biblical text. Sometimes the prophet's personal life appears in the record as an aspect of his public message. Once, when confronting a king, he took with him, to reinforce his prophetic word, a son with the symbolic name Shir Jashub, meaning a remnant will return. Again, to memorialize a message, he fathered another son, a prophetess with his wife, sealing the child with his message and the name Maha Shalal Hashbaz, meaning speed, spoil, hasten, prey, referring to the imminent spoilage by the Assyrians. If his children weren't sought as living witnesses to the prophet's premonitions, posterity wouldn't know about his wife or these children. All that is known is that his father's name was Amoz, Despite being contemporaries, Amos's name in Hebrew was different from the prophet Amos's name. Often, it is suggested that Isaiah was an aristocrat, possibly even of royal lineage. However, the same reasoning could apply to any number of prophets since Nathan in David's time. Prophets had relations with kings because, like Isaiah, they were well informed about public affairs, a crucial responsibility in being God's voice among the people. Additionally, Isaiah was emphatically with the poor and victimized, not with courtiers and the rich. It is sometimes argued that he was from a priestly family due to his knowledge of cultural matters and the fact that his commission apparently occurred in the temple in Jerusalem. Isaiah's early life included experiences with poverty, debauchery among the rich, and a familiarity with the unprotected, the widows, orphans, homeless, and landless victims of the rich. 
Isaiah prophesied about Jesus in almost a third of the chapters in the book of Isaiah, addressing both his first and second comings. Isaiah provides more prophecies about the second coming of Christ than any other prophet in the Old Testament. Here are some prophecies about Jesus in both his first and second coming. He will judge among the nations. Isaiah 2.4 He will be a branch of the Lord. Isaiah 4.2 He will be born of a virgin and called Emmanuel. Isaiah 7.14 Isaiah 8.8-10 8 He will be a stumbling stone and a rock of offense. Isaiah 8.14 Eternal government will be upon his shoulder, and he will be called the Prince of Peace. Isaiah 9 to 6 to 7. The Holy Spirit will rest upon him. Isaiah 11 2. He will be a tested stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Isaiah 28 16. Jesus Christ is directly mentioned in more than half of the chapters from Isaiah 40 to Isaiah 61. Undoubtedly, the most crucial chapter regarding humanity's salvation is Isaiah 53. This prophecy explains how he was wounded during his sacrifice for humanity's sins. In this passage, a description of his first coming starts in Isaiah 52.14, and Isaiah 53.25 explains that his earthly physical appearance wouldn't stand out. He was dispeced and rejected, and by his wounds, we are healed from our infirmities. This central chapter tells us that he would come to give his life as a sacrifice for our sins, symbolized by the Paschal Lamb. The statements about his death are then repeated because he was cut off from the land of the living, buried with the wicked, and made an offering for sin, pouring out his soul to death. Throughout the book of Isaiah, God revealed that Jesus would come to earth first as a human to deal with sin and then again in his glorified state after rising from the grave to establish the kingdom of God. Many people rejected him during his first coming because they didn't understand the dual nature of Christ's coming. He didn't fulfill the prophecies of ruling the earth and establishing an eternal kingdom during his first coming, which will occur during his second coming. Interestingly, God also revealed through Isaiah how Christ would be able to return to life after being crucified. The prophet wrote, Your dead will live, their corpses will rise. Isaiah 26, 19. Before Isaiah's time, King David had already prophesied about Christ's death and resurrection. God's eternal purpose was described as a mystery until it was fully revealed. It wasn't a mystery in the sense of being unknown to God, as he decided that his redemption plan would reside in Christ. When the prophets spoke of the coming Messiah, they made specific predictions that showed their message was from God not man. Moreover, when specific predictions come true, there is no doubt about the truth that Jesus is the Christ. Among the prophecies I've mentioned, the book contains two of the most famous prophecies in scriptures, the virgin birth of the Messiah and the suffering servant who died for our sins, fulfilled in Jesus Christ. In Luke 24, 26, 46, Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled. And Jesus, rising to read the scriptures, declares, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Isaiah's death is not known. The sacred books of the Bible do not mention it. In concluding our exploration of Isaiah, we find ourselves enriched by the depth of his prophetic insights. Isaiah's life, marked by sacrifice and devotion, serves as a testament to the profound connection between human experiences and divine revelation. Through the lens of his visionary encounters and symbolic family dynamics, Isaiah becomes a bridge between the temporal and the eternal. His prophecies about Jesus, encompassing both the first and second comings, unveil the redemptive tapestry woven by God through the ages. Isaiah's legacy endures not only as a historical figure, but as a conduit through which the divine plan for humanity unfolds. In this exploration of Isaiah, the 8th century BC prophet born in Jerusalem, we delved into the historical and divine context that shaped his life. 
Isaiah's prophetic calling, marked by a visionary encounter in the temple, set the stage for his role as a messenger of God during the Assyrian Empire's expansion. His willingness to convey divine messages, despite knowing the challenges it entailed, highlighted his dedication to righteousness and justice. Isaiah's personal life, reflected through symbolic family dynamics, added depth to his prophetic messages. Through children with meaningful names, he emphasized key aspects of his prophecies. Isaiah's prophecies about Jesus, spanning both his first and second comings, became a central theme. Notably, Isaiah 53 stands out, portraying the Messiah's sacrifice for humanity's sins. As we concluded, Isaiah emerged not just as a historical figure, but as a conduit of divine revelation. His legacy endures through the fulfillment of prophecies in Jesus Christ, showcasing the Bible's timeless wisdom and its relevance in shaping our understanding of faith and salvation. Isaiah's story, a tapestry of human experiences woven into the divine narrative, beckons us to explore the sacred pages of the Bible with renewed inspiration and insight. As we reflect on the prophecies that found fulfillment in Jesus Christ, we are reminded that the Bible stories are not mere tales of the past. They are living testimonies that continue to shape our understanding of faith, hope, and salvation. May the timeless wisdom embedded in Isaiah's narrative inspire and illuminate our journey through the sacred pages of the Bible.